Hi all, welcome to the international presentation of DDS CAD 16 launch. My name is Felipe and I'm the international partner channel manager at DDS. I'm going through the most interesting highlights of DDS CAD 16 in this presentation. And for your convenience, this video will be available in the YouTube channel, so you can rewatch it as many times as you like. We will also release the highlights of DDS CAD 16 as separate videos. In order to be notified of these videos and the ongoing content of DDS CAD in our YouTube channel, please subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell below. Let's start with the start page. The start page is where we manage our projects in DDS CAD 16. We have direct access to the working directory, so all the projects created on the working direct, uh, directory will be displayed here. We can switch to the recent projects and um, on the, on, uh, below the new project, we have direct access to the working directory folder and you can select another folder in another path as you like. Uh, the projects that belong to the working directory or that are displayed on a, on a recent uh, list can be um, attached to a new list of projects called favorites. To do so, you click on this pin indicator and you add this project to the favorites list. You can also reposition the projects in a favorites list using the drag and drop. To create a new project, we use this field and you can type the name of the project. If there is a project already with this name, it will indicate here, so you have to rename it. And now we have the possibility to set what is the default discipline uh, in this drag and drop, uh, sorry, in this drop down list, okay? And simply click create to create a new project. Good. When your project is created, we now see the project navigator, which is now introduced in DDS CAD 16 and is where we are going to manage the models of the active project. So by default, the electrical discipline is open because I have selected this as the default discipline for this project. If you would like to create a new model, like from this list that you have, I would double click, for example, the ground floor and the ground floor is created. Otherwise, you can right mouse click and select create model. Another possibility is to duplicate the information that we have from one model to the story below or above. But to show you this with some information, I will open um, other project, so I will come to the start page and I will select this project DDS CAD 16 in which I will continue this presentation. Okay, so I have now selected the architecture discipline in this project and I have here the topic one. In this topic one, I have this DWG for the building and if I open the topic two, I don't have anything, it's still empty. Let's say I would like to copy this information in this case, I only have this DWG to the floor or to the story above. I simply use this option and it will overwrite the information. So I have um, this DWG in both levels. Well, when we talk about specific disciplines, let's say uh, electrical, and you already have the installation in the electrical discipline and you have a typical floor, you can duplicate and everything will be already set in a new level for any discipline. The same for sanitary heating and ventilation. Okay, so the next topic now is about the print layout. Um, to create a new print layout, we now use this option print layout here that uh, it opens the configure print layout dialog. Well, here we have uh, all in one. So you can select the sheet size and the preview picture 
will display the correct um, um, preview, of course, of the print layout. We can also switch the title field from here. And you always have an overview of your print layout. But uh, another thing is that once it's created, and let's see on the Explorer, it will be displayed here. We can now directly copy this print layout. So it will save time when it's about to copy information from, from the print that uh, doesn't have to be uh, done many times. So of course, again, in order to show you a bad example, I will select a, another model that I have prepared some things, some print layouts. So this technical mirroring, if we come to the Explorer again, you will see five print layouts. Let's open this print layout AP05. I not only have the sheet and the title field, but I already included a model, a part model and a legend. Let's say if I copy this print layout AP05, now I have this copy with the same information. Okay. Um, if I would like to rename this print layout, I come to properties and I can simply rename it to AP06. Now, another new feature belonging to, to this topic is the print multiple layouts. Now in this list of printed layouts with the Act, uh, with this option current files, uh, current file um, active, we see all the print layouts from the active model. So we could select one, uh, one of them, all of them at once, and they could be plotted or print to the same PDF. Uh, otherwise, we can select all open files and all open files from this project will be displayed as I have just created this print layout and the copy in the building discipline. Okay. Now, another subject is about the external file formats. Now we have the possibility to, to use other external file formats to create our own symbols. To show you this example, I will open these new external file formats in the electrical discipline because I will use a light feature as an example. So I open the LAMPS various product database. This is now the new workflow to create uh, a symbol in DDS CAD 16. You simply come to, to the, the product database you would like to create your product. And then by right mouse click, we have the possibility to copy and replace if you already have your external um, file format in your computer. Otherwise, we can also use the Beam Object Cloud based. In this case, uh, it opens automatically and uh, we can see here that we have the possibility to import directly IFC files, 3DS, RFA, DWG, OBJ, and STL. So for this example, I will search for a manufacturer called Bellatrix. And we see some uh, products here. I will select this Bellatrix suspended. If I click on details, we will see what is the file format of this uh, symbol and here it is it's our uh, RFA so it's a Revit family and uh, if I click OK it will directly open the symbol in the object editor this is the floor plan if we go to 3d and we can also activate the render mode we can see the other material render materials and also the insertion of this object. So everything's already positioned correctly. And uh, another nice thing about DDS CAD 16 is that we can directly open or use this symbol in our, in, in our project. We simply have to save it. And when we come back to our model, uh, we just have to open the product database. Once again, if we go to the bottom of the list, 
uh, that we have copied the, 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 the symbol, you will see here the symbol with the description uh, named on beam object. And you can just insert as many times as you like. And we can see also the result in 3D. Okay, so it's it has never been so easy to create a symbol in DDS CAD as in DDS CAD 16. Uh, good, so now let's talk about the technical mirroring. This function was introduced in DDS CAD 15, but now nothing will be left behind when we talk about technical mirroring of the electrical discipline. So for this example, I will select all these components in this area, on this apartment, and I will activate the function that is available on the edit. And this is the function, copy and mirror selected objects. We create like a, a axis line. I will activate the ortho and everything is correctly mirrored to, uh, to the side, to the other side. Now let's say I would like to copy these two installations from these two apartments to the apartments on the bottom of this level. I can select everything. I will right mouse click because I can repeat this function and I will define an axis and with just a few clicks everything is mirrored. Well, because now the technical mirroring um, also includes um, cable management systems such as cable ladders, cable trays, conduits and cable trunking, I will show individually um, the result. So I'll select this cable ladder, I will repeat the function and it's copied correctly as well as for conduit and junction boxes. and also for the cable trunking and its boxes. Okay. So it will also save a lot of time. Uh, change of subject. Now we will talk about the distribution board manager. So I will come back to the project navigator and I will select this, uh, this topic distribution board manager. So the distribution board displays the boards that we have in the model. We also have the possibility to create a new board from here. And we can also place the, uh, the board in a model by using the drag and drop like this. So we now have the possibility to show uh, all supply circuits like this. And if we have like a, a main board and a sub distribution board, we can also use the drag and drop to connect one board to the other like this. So let me create a new board, for example, and I could insert in a third level like this. Okay, so it's quite uh, very, very simple. And we also have the possibility to show all circuits of the distribution board here. So we have a better overview of them. So let's say I would like to open the circuits list. We can do it by selecting the board you like and you can directly show in circuits list like this. So to show you the, the, the information of the distribution board and how it's reacting directly, I will insert three sockets in my model like this. And I will connect or draw the circuit. The drag and drop also work for uh, drawing the circuit. So you can select the, the, the circuit and drag and drop to the model and you can directly draw your circuit like this. We now have the information for the socket of the apparent power. So we have here 200 volt ampere. Let's say I will just uh, remove this 200, so just click on the X and it will come like this 3680 volt ampere. If we take a look at the, the circuit here, the selected circuit here, 
we see the information that this fuse is overloaded. So there is this in, uh, yellow indication. So let's come back to the socket and I will come back to 200 volt ampere. And this information will be updated. So it's not indicating any uh, over loaded fuse anymore so you have a much better overview of all information uh, belonging to your circuits belonging to your distribution boards with the new distribution board manager um, we also have the possibility to directly um, generate reports we can also set the, the board as start for voltage drop calculation and we can also create this cable calculation result so it will generate this H HTML with the information of your circuits and at last but not least we can also uh, generate the schema from here so we can create the electric directly from the distribution board right so everything is now centralized now changing of subject now let's talk about the cable management system i have prepared another um, model to show you this because now we can connect directly the cable management systems to boards and this have uh, this has two impacts the first impact is that when we move the object everything moves as well and another impact is that we can now centralize uh, our board and when we create circuits that will, will, um, will be routed by these cable management systems we don't need any other function or like a, a, a cable path in order to connect the board to your terminals so everything now will be neat and clean on your model and with your calculations now we will move of uh, modules we will talk about mechanical sanitary heating and ventilation in sanitary heating and ventilation we now have a new story port function i will select this first uh, topic one new story function this new story port function and i will switch to 2d where we see these multiple pipes going to the floor above uh, we now have this story port indication and from this story port indication we can directly continue the the, the modeling in the floor where it goes so in this case it goes to the floor above so selecting this option if i left click the the story above will be selected and zooming to the story port so there is this indication of the story port and also the representation of the dimension of this pipe so let's say if we have like a shaft you know if there is space or not to continue or, um, your your pipes or ducts um, another thing about these story ports is that this representation of the story port can be switched using the property grid so you have the possibility to change the floor direction the flow direction here and you can also turn on and off this uh, indication okay and about copy because i have introduced to you the the, the possibility to directly duplicate one level to to another so it also works correctly with pipes and ventilations when we are uh, we want to continue these uh, systems um, over the over the levels so let's say i would like to copy this to the floor above and of course i will open the next floor so you see i don't have anything like this so if i go back to the topic two and i duplicate to the floor above to the story above you will see that everything will be copied <laughs> and everything will be correctly uh, connected between and or among in, in other cases uh, to the floors um, among the floors uh, very well 
And to show this also for the ventilation discipline, um, let's say I will open this topic two, where we see these three ducts. And what we, what, what we have different of these ducts is that these two on the bottom, they are insulated. We have insulation and this on the top, we only have the duct. If we take a look at the story ports of these ducts, we see that we not only have the representation of the, of the dimension of the duct, but also the insulation. So you always have the, the, the correct view of the size so you avoid um, in order to avoid clashes. At last but not least for ventilation and sanitary heating for uh, mechanical we have a new property grid and this property grid is especially for calculations and also for your modeling. For this example I will select this duct reduction. As you can see it indicates the parameters that we can manipulate on this transition or reduction. And we can also manipulate or edit this reduction from the property grid now. So let's say I would like to change the, the eccentricity from the center to down. Or the horizontal reference also change it to right eccentricity. Or I would like to change the shape of the transition from rectangular to circular. Or I would like to change now the diameter from 300 to 200. So everything will be directly be affected on your model. And when you change the parameters that, uh, as you can see, also the preview picture and your parameters will be edited as well. Hope you have got excited to work with DDS CAD 16 as I am. If you are a DDS CAD user, you have received the mailing with information to upgrade your license. But if you're not a DDS CAD user yet, visit our new landing page dds-cad.com experience. See you next time. Cheers!